In this video, we'll be discussing simple interest amortized loans. Most loans are of this type, including home mortgages and car loans. Let's begin by seeing how a loan of this type works. So, a bank loans you P dollars. They could have invested this money in a compound interest account. So this would be the future value of that money if the interest rate was R, the compounding period was M times a year, and it was in there for T years. Instead, they loan you that P dollars. You then make payments to them, regular payments, so annuity payments. So what they do is they compare that to the future value of the annuity payments that you make. And the idea is they would like these to be equal so that they make the same future value that they could have made if they had invested the money instead of loaning it to you. The way that the bank makes its money is if they have an interest rate of say 3% available to them, then they will loan money to you at a higher interest rate than what they could invest in. And that makes sense because the investment they could have made would be a secure investment whereas loaning the money to you is a risky investment so they should get a higher return for that riskier investment. Let's look at an example. Suppose you want to purchase a $250,000 home and you have 15% as a down payment. You're going to take the balance of the loan as a 30-year loan at 7.5%. What are the monthly payments you will make on this loan? First of all, we should compute what our down payment is. The loan, or the house, was $250,000 and we made a down payment of 15% which is $37,500. If we subtract that from the cost of the home, we get our loan amount, which is $212,500. Now what we need to do is we need to fill in the formula above and solve for payment. So $212,500 times 1 plus R, 7.5.075, over M monthly payments raised to the M times T equals <coughs> what we're solving for payment times 1 plus R over M raised to the M times T minus 1 all over R over M. So now we can solve for payment by dividing both sides of the equation by this fraction. And we get that payment equals, remember when you divide by a fraction you flip and multiply, the entire left side of the equation can be considered to be over 1, so when we multiply it ends up in the numerator. And if we work this out on our calculator, we find that the monthly payment should be $1,485.83 when rounded to the nearest penny. Now if we want, we can find the total interest paid on this loan. We have to make monthly payments of $1,485.83, that's 12 times a year for 30 years. If you work this out on your calculator, you'll see that we pay a total of $534,898.80. If we subtract from this the $200 $12,500 that we actually borrowed for the house, you'll see that we are paying $322,398.80 over twice what we borrowed is what we paid on the loan and more than what we borrowed is what we're paying in interest. Next, let's figure out how much we would still own on the house after we've paid this loan for 15 years. One might think that after 15 years, we'll have paid off half of our loan. Well, let's see what the case is. 
So to do this, the first thing we need to do is ask ourselves, at the end of 15 years, how much money would the bank expect to have? And we're going to use the, the original concept of where the loan payments come from. The $212,500 could have been invested in a compound interest account for those 15 years for a future value of $652,258.49. Our payments are annuity payments. So we are paying $1,485.83 in an annuity for the same 15 years. If we work this out, we find that it's worth $491,976.83. So if we take this $652,258.49 that they expect to have earned and subtract off the $491,976.83 that our annuity payments are worth at the end of the 15 years, we find that we still owe $160,281.66 on our loan. Which, if we subtract that from the original loan amount, we find that we've only really paid $52,218.34 on our loan. Not very much for having paid for 15 years. In fact, those 15 years of payments at 7.5% interest are worth $491,976.83. Your textbook will show you how to set up an amortization schedule. This will show you how your monthly payments affect the balance, how much of a monthly payment goes towards interest, and how much actually goes off, comes off the loan or the principal. And you can see that in the beginning, most of your payments are interest payments. And over time, the payments slowly shift to being more towards the loan and less towards interest. But it takes a long time, which is why even after paying this 30-year loan for 15 years, we've only paid off $52,218.34 of our original loan amount.